Now, if you get caught in a public environment, active shooter situation, the best you can probably hope for is that you actually have your good subcompact up to full size defensive handgun with you. But you'd be a lot better prepared if you had something like this. Now, this is specifically an active shooter response rifle. This is exactly the way that we recommend that private security that are interested in their corporate campus security um, having an active shooter response, this is how we recommend they set them up. For patrol rifles that are going to be in supervisors' cars that are going to be deployed, dispatched to an active shooter situation, this again is a great option for active shooter response. Now it's probably not the way you want to set up your home defense gun, and it's probably not the way you want to set up a generic patrol response rifle, but it is going to be a very specialized and very capable tool in an active shooter response scenario. So again, let's imagine that you're a private security guy who has a patrol vehicle. You're not supposed to be armed, you're not supposed to be carrying around a rifle certainly in your everyday moment of doing your security around a corporate campus, but if there's an active shooter situation in the cafeteria, in the manufacturing space, in the parking lot, in an assembly area, wherever it may be, this is the kind of thing that you're going to want to bring to that situation. We have a traditional glass optic, a regular magnifying scope. Now we don't need it to be a 10 or 20 times magnification. This particular one is adjustable from one and a half times up to six times, and it just uses a simple thick duplex reticle. If we think about the kind of shooting that we're going to have to do in and amongst other people, maybe across a, a warehouse floor, maybe across a manufacturing floor, across the parking lot, something like 50 to 100 yards, a lot of people around, maybe at 15 or 20 yards, but with people in the background, people in the foreground, maybe even something that develops into a hostage situation, having that magnifying optic for a precise shot is incredibly important. So a traditional glass scope is the way that I'm going to recommend that people go. Because the traditional glass scope is not going to allow us to as easily engage a threat who just pops around a corner or is inside of a room, or for us to shoot very, very rapidly when we have a close quarters immediate threat and there aren't any bystanders around, if we happen to be isolated with the shooter, we're going to want to have some type of an offset optic. All right, now of course this firearm is unloaded, the magazine in here is empty, and I just want to give you an idea of what that is. If I'm here and I'm thinking about coming up and using the scope, what I'm actually going to be doing is rotating that elbow up and now I'm using the iron sight. So I'm here, I'm thinking about shooting off in a long distance or I'm thinking about shooting in a long distance here. Bad guy pops up, bad guy threat pops up. I'm going to come up instead of traditionally coming up and then not being able to see anything through that magnified optic. It's simply a raise of the elbow and then boom, I've got that one o'clock optic right there in that way. The other thing that I've got on here, so I've got three optics actually. Remember, primary defensive carbine alignment is going to be done kinesthetically. Four points of contact, primary aiming, bring the gun up, both eyes open, focused on the threat, bang, bang, bang. The primary optic on this particular firearm is the magnified glass. Secondary optic is the one o'clock iron sight. And I've got a laser set far forward on the gun for a couple of different reasons. One, in an extreme close quarters situation where I actually have to drop the gun and bring it back because I'm worried about someone being able to reach out and grab my firearm, but I'm not close enough for contact shooting where I'm actually in contact with the bad guy, I can use that laser as an indicator. The other thing I can do with this laser is I might be able to use it to indicate the location of a threat to some other person who's on my team. Again, if I'm private security, if I'm part of a law enforcement response, I might be able to use that laser to indicate, hey, there's the bad guy, bad guy's over here behind that door, that kind of thing. I actually use it as a signaling device. The other thing I can do with that laser is potentially use it to distract the bad guy. So let's say I'm in a situation where I can't take the shot. There's too many bystanders, there's too much movement. I might be able to turn that laser on, start aiming for the eyes of the bad guy, distract him, get his attention, maybe get him to freeze long enough for me to then transition right to that shot with the magnified optic. So a couple of different things I can do with a laser in an environment with an active shooter. So we've primarily got three things set up here the magnifying optic, the iron sight, and the laser, all as options for both tactical use or actual aiming devices in an active shooter environment. A couple other things I've got going on here. I've got a good comfortable stock. I may need to be very, very precise. This is gonna be a high quality firearm capable of delivering precise shots, good high quality stock that I can get a good cheek weld on, a good consistent cheek weld on to be able to take maximum advantage of this glass optic. The other thing is a sling. You're gonna need to have some kind of a sling. You don't wanna grab this rifle and then after the shooting, what are you gonna do with the rifle? Put it down on the ground. There's gonna be people to help. There's gonna be people that you have to escort out. There may be people that you need to control and make sure that they're not gonna run around and hurt themselves. They're not gonna go disturb the evidence of the bad guy if you are in a law enforcement or a security capacity. There's all kinds of things you're gonna to wanna to do after the shooting and you're not gonna to wanna to just set the gun down, let it hang on your body. If you can go to a two point and get even more administrative, that's even better. So make sure you have some kind of a sling that you can grab 
grab the rifle and go with. Now I've got a place to put the rifle while I'm dealing with other people, while I'm administering medical assistance, whatever it is I might also be doing. If you're in a situation that allows you to prepare ahead of time in your workplace or in your professional role, thinking about how to set up an active shooter response rifle is part of your active shooter response strategy.